Hello, my name is Magnus Petersen. This talk is about share buyback valuation and in particular stock options. If a company has issued stock options in the past and they are now to be exercised, we want to know if the company should buy back shares to offset the diluting impact. I will assume that you have already watched the first talk in this series, so I'll just briefly recap what the value to eternal shareholders is. It is a potential for dividend payouts, which is the excess cash that could be paid out as dividends now, plus the present value of future earnings that can be paid out as dividends in the future. We denote it by a small v, and the capital V is the per share value after dividend tax. The value without a share buyback, but with the stock options exercised, is denoted capital V subscript exercise. It is the V from before plus the number of options times the exercise price. And we have to take the dilution into account, so we divide it by shares plus options now instead of just shares. The value with a share buyback and the stock options exercised is denoted capital W subscript exercise. It is the V from before plus the number of options times the exercise price which is money that the company gets from exercising the options. And we have to subtract the number of options times the share price, which is money the company spends on buying back shares to offset the diluting impact. So the per share value is just div divided by the number of shares from before because the dilution has been offset. We also take the dividend tax into account up here. The relative value of making a share buyback or having the dilutive impact of the exercise stock options is this. We use the definitions from the previous slides and we reduce so we get this long mathematical expression. The equilibrium is where the value to eternal shareholders is unaffected by the share buyback. Um, we express it as an inequality so we can see when the value is increased from making the share buyback. So, this over here is the value with the share buyback and the stock options exercised and it is greater than the value without a share buyback but also the stock options exercised whenever the following holds. So the market cap must be less than this number over here. Again it is found by using the definition of W exercise and V exercise from the previous slides and reducing the mathematical expression until we get this. Now let's consider an example for Acme Corporation. Let's assume the value to eternal shareholders or the intrinsic value is V and it is $100 million. There are 8 million shares outstanding. There are 1.5 million options. The exercise price is $7. So the value without a share buyback but the stock options exercised is the formula from one of the previous slides, this one here, and we plug in the numbers V. $100 million, options $1.5 million, exercise price $7, number of shares $8 million, number of options again $1.5 million, and we will leave the dividend taxation as it is because it will factor out uh, on one of the following slides. So the result is a value per share of about $11.63 when we don't make a share buyback, but the stock options uh, are exercised and cause dilution. The value with a share buyback is calculated as follows. We will assume that the share price is $15 and this means the market cap is the number of shares which is 8 million multiplied by the share price which is assumed to be 15 and that gives $120 million. Recall that the value V is $100 million which is slightly less than this market cap. So. The value with the stock options exercised and a share buyback to offset the diluting impact is as follows. This is just the formula from one of the previous slides and we plug in the numbers. V is $100 million and the options is $1.5 million. The exercise price is $7, share price $15, number of shares $8 million. And again, we leave the dividend taxation as a variable. And what we get is a per share value of $11. So the relative value of making the share buyback can be calculated using the um, results we just had, which is 
up done up here. So we have the W exercise divided by V exercise, and we insert the numbers we calculated in the previous two slides, and we get about 94.6%. So this means that when we exercise the stock options and we buy back shares under the, these assumptions of market cap and value V and so on, the value to eternal shareholders is decreased by about 5.4%. We can also calculate this using the relative value formula instead of using the intermediate calculations up here. So we plug in all the numbers in the formula, V, $100 million, options, $1.5 million, and so on, and we get the same result. The equilibrium is where the value to eternal shareholders of Acme Corporation is unaffected by the share buyback. We express the equilibrium as an inequality, so we can see when the share buyback actually increases value to eternal shareholders. It is a formula from one of the previous slides, and we just plug in the numbers. V is $100 million, options is $1.5 million, the exercise price is $7, and so on. So what we get is that the market cap must be less than about $93 million, and this is equivalent to the share price being less than about $11.63. So whenever the share price is less than $11.63 and under these assumptions about V and so on, um, the share buyback to offset the dilute dilution of the stock options increases value to eternal shareholders. Conversely, if the share price is greater than $11.63, then the share buyback decreases value to eternal shareholders. So to summarize, stock options cause dilution when exercised, and we can buy back shares to offset that dilution. However, that should only be done when the share price is below the equilibrium, otherwise the shareholder value is decreased. This talk is based on the Treatise on Share Buyback Valuation, which is long and detailed, and it can be found on this website. The link is also provided in the description under the video.